And this is, has been a very important consideration, how you're going to do an integration and recognize of, uh, that you are backed up by those products and companies behind it. <clears throat> so in summary, I don't know how I'm doing for time. Um, I just wanted to remember this, uh, how to access those uh, moot platforms and applications and visually be able to connect and interact between them and make it available, make it work for any platform, any database, any location. I didn't mention much of the location, but location has always been playing on all these scenarios as well. Most of these cases, and especially on that case, we're talking about multiple countries, multiple locations, and all that is hidden behind those rules nicely. <clears throat> uh, behind the technology, just to mention the company, because you probably never heard of us. Is that right? Who heard of Magic before? Oh, some of you. Four. Yes. Uh, because mainly we work through partners and ISVs. They create their own uh, product and they deploy those products with their own label. We don't appear. But if you use, let's say, Sky, if you have Sky at home and you select your program there, that system that runs that program uh, scheduler is our technology. If you take the tube and see all the other verts, that's CBS. Our product is behind that as well. So we don't appear, but we're there. And we are in 50 countries and in NASDAQ as well. So if you have multiple locations, you can have the support that you need locally on, your, on the local language as well. This is just a quick sample of customers. We have a full list on our site. And BI, as I mentioned, the customers are moving to uh, the biggest novelty at the moment is uh, mobile and BI. I don't know how much of BI are you doing, business intelligence, at what level. At least reporting seems to be the first initial push, but then you have uh, predictive analysis and other more sophistication in BI. Uh, who is already doing BI at the moment? Yes, so still minority, but yeah, we're probably looking into that. And the first interest in doing BI is because most of the BIs offer a very competitive a solution for your current reporting needs. So you can start doing BI by simply saving money, replacing your BI, uh, reporting solution, and then get the benefits of predictive analysis, for example. Uh, I would now would do a demo, or would do a demo, uh, um, connecting SAP to Salesforce and make you all uh, capable of come, go back to your company and says, okay, I can connect any system to any system in five minutes, yeah? And show your IT, if you're not from IT, how to do it. Uh, but it's not gonna be very practical for me to load down here. I couldn't make it work here. So I can, uh, can I invite you to come to our booth and have a look on how to do it? And I also will uh, train you if you want so you can show your IT how easy it is to integrate any system regardless if it's sitting on your premise or on cloud. I'm joking here, but it's very, very easy and you can see that live. So you can see that is uh, what if a scenario that you might have in your company that you think, well, that's gonna take months to make it happen. What would that mean if I could use one technology like this one? Yes? Okay, thank you very much. And if you have any question, I, I'll be pleased to answer it. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, the, the, the solution they wanted that must be, at the beginning, they're saying it must be cloud-based only, is uh, the integration part and the, the support to mobilize and then do all the other um, deployment they need. 
So the, the initial evaluation was, if it's cloud-based, we don't need to install anything on our network. Yeah, this is, was the point of management, uh, contentious point of management. The problem is you, you don't want cloud isolated from your existing system. The whole point was to actually connect to those systems. So you need to come down to your network in a secure way and the easiest way. And sometimes installing something on the network that makes that bridge safely, uh, securely, is the best way to do it. So, so you know, who in the company made those decisions? Was it, was it through IT? Or was it through client infrastructure? Was it, what kind of level? It, in this case, it was IT. Okay. Yes, in the, that specific case. I have a very similar one what, where it was the, the CFO. Yeah, it was the, the main decision. Sure. Yes, absolutely. This type of tool allows a bit more flexibility because if you go to SAP and say, oh, I need a program in SAP, I need a consultant, probably external, then they program and that becomes a black box, right? With this, you've got more flexibility in who can maintain and how to, to do it. But we play nicely with SAP programs as well. Okay, so they wanted to go cloud. Yes. So they wanted this tool in the middle to handle the interface. Yes. In case they, uh, they were doing themselves, but it could be, we could manage that, that's one, one uh, option, and we could have a partner managing that as well, that's also very common. If we talk in SAP, Salesforce, and a few other ecosystems, usually a partner uh, is managing that, because they combine the two uh, knowledge with the specific knowledge of the application and the, the business knowledge that you need. Yeah, but you have these three options. You can manage yourself. We can manage magic software, or a partner can manage. It's up to you what it is suits you better. And your, yes? So your, your intellectual property is, uh, is a connector, isn't it? Yes. The interface is with the What you license is the connector, yes. Yes. We, we might, uh, you might be sub-licensing depending on what is the connector is happening. Or if you, uh, I'm, I'm considering your enterprises that you uh, would look at this for your own use. But if you are actually a provider of a service or you have your own applications, you can also create your own connector using R2. So you could create your own connector. Let's say you sell currently a product that competes with Salesforce. So you could create your own connector, and we would include that on the other hand as well. The fact that we do that uh, business intelligence is one of your provisions. Yes. Uh, is that as a part of the connector? Yes, exactly. In that case, because BI uh, is, is, is a completely separate product that will run on multiple devices, it's more a user uh, level of, a device, of a solution, yes, but it's the same. Behind it is going to be the same map and graphics that you, you saw. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, normally, we just do the, the technology. So if you need to develop an application, let's say you want to create, um, we have many partners, it's the ISV scenario I mentioned. So if you want to create your own application, either for internal use or to resell it, then a partner will work or we will train you and you do it yourself or your, through your IT, whichever way suits you. Any more questions? Sure. sure. I didn't get an answer to that. No, sorry. Yes. Uh, if we have a, an obscure system, yes. an obscure operating system, yes. obscure database and everything, obviously you cannot connect to it anyway. Not really, no. Uh, no, I'll show you. 
uh, uh, those connectors, um, it's, it took me a while to go back, but those connectors, uh, they are also generic connectors. So let's say you have your obscure uh, application, it's a very specific application for, let's say, research. It was written in C++ and talks to some specific machines and is, uh, is there. One of those connectors would talk to that program and you can use that. It might be the case that you think, oh, we better rewrite this or we want to rewrite for other reasons, but we have the generic connectors, we connect to generic languages or generic services, etc. Yes, there are the, so we, I can go back there, but oh, it's better. So you see, for example, here, you have a .NET service or even a COM service or Java. So if it's a language that we don't know, then you have an SDK that you just create the connection with that specific language. Yes. In it what sense? From yes. Integrating <coughs> SAP, uh -huh. What did you do? Did you start from scratch, proving the concept, or you have that in the <laughs> From scratch. Okay. From scratch. Oh, uh, that's what I said. I can show you on the stand there. I'll show you an empty one and build it uh, uh, as you see it. But uh, in, your, in this example, normally we need the experts of uh, uh, other applications with us. So we need the SAP expert, the person in the company that knows all the SAP implementation, the Salesforce implementa uh, implementator on the company, and our uh, expert in our tool. So they say, oh yeah, I know the scenario, I point the component, I see all this data, where do you want it? Oh, I wanted this. And then they say, oh, but this needs to obey rules, or, or the API is already showing some rules here, so we need to discuss that. But that's the point. What about the spatial data? Spatial data. Yes, well, it depends on what level. If you want to bring it in, or if you're generating it, uh, there is some, uh, I, I'm not an expert to, to, to comment so much, but I, I, we have a technical guy in our, on our stand. But we have, we have probably, if I'm guessing, that you're talking about some specific databases that uh, do uh, mapping. Papi. Okay, geographic mapping. Yes, I think we have a demo with geographic mapping. That's not too complex. I thought you were talking more like about cloud uh, cubes and things like that, that it, it tends to be very uh, interesting in, look, in the way of looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if, you, if you have a very technical, um, I'm not sure, maybe we could discuss a little bit with the technical guy that's in our stand. Yeah? Sorry, that was beyond my... <laughs> any, any other question? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay, yeah, very good question. It, it doesn't, so, so I can ex exaggerate saying that. You oh, oh, that wake me up. So if you look at this Salesforce component, what is the difference? Just rephrasing your question if I understood the question. What's the difference between this Salesforce component and the generic components? Yes, it's more or less this question. So why do I need the Salesforce component if Salesforce already offering me, offering me an API? Yeah. You could use the generic components. The difference is how many steps you need to take and how long it's gonna take. If you use the generic component, you need to point the component to the web service, or let's say, to the API, and then you need to understand which API to use. If you use the, the Salesforce component, it filters, it provides you with a wizard, saying these are the services that you can see, this is the data. So you get there faster with less steps. But you have the two options. You're right. Yeah. Any other question? No? Nope. Okay, thank you very much.
Hopefully you come and visit us. Okay. Thank you.